let's get going and to help set the scene and tell you why we're here lords ladies and gentlemen please welcome patrick dempsey I think I'm only a little cheese standing next to him. <laughs> um, I apologise if uh, you've heard this story before, but it sort of takes you back to when uh, I thought the big hospitality conversation would be a good idea. I never thought back in 2011 that we'd have the afternoon of the annual hospitality summit to talk about the big hospitality conversation and about youth employment. Um, I went in October 2011, I sit on something called the Talent and Skills Council that Steve Holliday, who's going to talk to you in a minute, chairs, and it's part of business in the community. And they held an event at Excel, and there are about 200 people sitting on round tables, a bit like the, the, the forum today. And I was sitting next to a young chap who turned out his name is Sharia, and uh, Sir Mike Rake, who's the chairman of BT, was talking. And, uh, it had been going on for a little while, and uh, I said to this chap, why are you here? And it was a big conversation. He said, well, I'm here in case anyone would like to give me a job, like you just heard from our three colleagues here. And he said, uh, I live in Tower Hamlets. And uh, he said, do you know where that is? And I said, yeah, sort of. And he said, have you been there? I said, no. And uh, he, I said to him, you know, would you like a job? And he said, I've just told you I'm here to get a job. <laughs> It was quite a big bloke, too. <laughs> anyway, I said, look, after it's over, in about 10, 15 minutes, I've got to go to another meeting, but I've got a colleague called John Forrest, who's also talking later. And I said, well, we might be able to help you with a job, because we've just opened a hotel at the Olympic Park at Stratford. So anyway, he turned away from me, and he went back on his mobile phone, was texting, and I thought, well, he's not interested in what I have to say, and he's not interested in what Sir Mike Rake had to say either. So I thought that was the end of it. Of course, what he was doing is he was tweeting three of his friends who were sitting at other tables saying, I've got some bloke here who might give us a job. <laughs> so um, this is Sharia. Um, he, he's quite a big guy, actually, and his three friends were even bigger. So when the conference finished 10 minutes later, these four big lads surrounded me and said, hello, mister, I hear you've got a job. And I said, I've got just the man. And I grabbed John Forrest and introduced them. Uh, we took three of them on. Three of them came the next day. Um, they did ask questions like, where do we go? Uh, do we go through the front door of the hotel, or is there a back door? Um, do we have to get there at a certain time? Uh, what should we dress in? Things that you and I take for granted. But anyway, we took Sharia on, and uh, I've kept a sort of an interest in him, and he, he's here today, he's going to come in later on. Um, about six months after he started, he sent me a text, and it said, hello, mister. He said, I don't quite know who you are, but he said, you haven't half made a difference in my life. He said, I've got three brothers, a sister, a mum and a dad, and an uncle, and we all live together in Tower Hamlets. He said, I'm the only one in my uh, apartment who works, and uh, I want to be a role model for my brothers and my sister. And that was his start with us. It hasn't been always an easy journey, because living where he lived, he got into a few things outside of work, so we had to move him to another site so he didn't mix with that group. And he now works in our Leicester Square uh, Hotel. He did his apprenticeship level, level two, which he completed uh, last year. And he's now on our Shooting Stars program, uh, so level three. So hopefully, he'll go on to be a manager in time. And that's really where it all started for me, that simple story that I've told a couple of times. And we've got lots of examples since that of people who have progressed with us. Um, so what I thought I'd do is just spend five minutes and say, so what is the big conversation all about? What have we done? And what's next? So the big conversation, as I said, is part of the Talent and Skills Council. And it's an industry-wide group of people who come together across about 14 different sectors. And Steve Holliday is going to talk to you about that in a few minutes. And going from that, one of the challenges that Steve and the board gave to me was, can you get something going in hospitality? So I thought, well, let's give it a go. Let's see if we can make a difference. And I got together with a group of friends and industry colleagues who are here in the room, Ufi, uh, Mark Lewis from The Caterer, Anne Pierce from Springboard, Heiko Figgy, John Forrest, blah, 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 Jan Marshall from Marriott. And we got together, 
Uh, and it was a doers group, except for me. I was just there. They were all the doers. And uh, we managed to put together our first big hospitality conversation event. And we held it in July last year, in 2012. Uh, Heiko Figgy very kindly sponsored it at the Horse Guards. And I thought we'd get about 50 people, because that's about most people I know. Uh, they knew a lot more. And we actually got 170 industry leaders, young people, apprenticeships, uh, work experience, and young unemployed kids to come and host it and do it with us. And we put on our first industry event. And that was it. And then it, I describe it a bit like pyramid selling. We all found a couple of people in the audience that we knew and liked, and we asked them if they would hold a big hospitality conversation. So what we did next was we organized, with terrific help from a lot of people in this room, to hold 10 industry events across the UK. So we've now had 10 hospitality events across the UK, uh, the big conversation for hospitality. And in that, we've had 30,000 plus pledges around structured work placements, apprenticeships, and employing 16 to 24 year old kids. 30,000. 5,000 of those were for what we call NEAT, 16 to 24 year olds, 15,000 apprenticeships, and 10,000 work placements. And the idea is that the big conversation, you make a pledge. So my pledge, which I started off with, is that last year I said we would do 50 work placements. We actually did 72 work placements, and this year we're committing to 500. But then I've got 650 hotels and 300 pub restaurants, so it's not difficult. We also said we'd do apprenticeships. And last year we did 411 apprenticeships. This year we've pledged to do over 600. And for every premier in the country now, the manager of that site is bonused on doing one apprenticeship. And we have 3,500 people in learning, and it represents 3% of their salary to get one person through the apprenticeship. And last year we employed 750 16 to 24-year-olds in Whitbread. We said all our new jobs, that we would take half of those. And the fact that we're opening nearly 50 hotels this year, this year we think we'll reach nearly 1,200 16 to 24-year-olds. So that's what we did. We had 10 big hospitality conversations. We got some pledges going. I'm going to go and unveil it later. So what next? Well, what next is we want all of you to try and get involved in having a big hospitality conversation around those three areas. We want to hold 12 events in 2014. 12 industry events across restaurants, across uh, hotels, and across food services and pub restaurants. So we want to get everybody involved in having a big conversation and try and really get some traction behind it. We want to try and go for 60,000 pledges next year. 20,000 apprenticeships. Ufi's just smirking because it was 50, but I think 20s are easier. 20,000 apprenticeships, 20,000 work placements, and 20,000 16 to 24 year olds employed in our industry. And if you add that together, it's over 100,000 that we would have got to over a period of two years. We also want to try and get some proper funding behind this, because I do say it has been a bit like pyramid selling. Lots of companies like Compass, Accor, Whitbread and others have come together, and Marriott have come together and put their money into holding the events. You know, I never would have thought that we would have got to this stage today. So we want to get some funding now. We want to talk to government to see if they will help us with some funding. We want to put somebody into the BHA to run this as a proper program, because this is now part of the BHA framework and agenda. And one or two of us on the committee will actually sponsor it and lead it, but we now want to put somebody in charge and, and running it. So that's really what the big hospitality conversation is all about. Um, I'm really delighted that this afternoon it's being dedicated to this. You're going to hear from lots of people who have done lots of work, and you're going to hear from lots of individuals. And when you hear somebody outside saying, you know, I'm here because I'm looking for a job, um, it's really great when you say, I'll give you one. Have a good afternoon, and I'm going to leave you with a short clip. Thank you.